أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لاميم تلك آيات الكتاب الحكيم هدى ورحمة للمحسنين الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم بالآخرة هم يوقنون صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Brothers and sisters wherever you are السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I would like to begin by congratulating you all on the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan, the month of blessing, the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness, the month of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the most important features that makes the month of Ramadan stand out and makes it the best of all of the months is that the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. The month of Ramadan, what makes it so great is that the Quran was revealed during the month of Ramadan. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس. وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. It is a book of guidance for mankind and it has clear proofs of guidance and it is a criterion. It deciphers between right and wrong. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to make the Quran a part of our lives. We have to live the life of the Quran. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was. When his wife was asked to describe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, she would say, Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. His manners were the Qur'an. The Qur'an is a book of life. The Qur'an is a book of lessons. The Qur'an is a book of teachings. <coughs> and we have to make the Qur'an be a part of our lives. The Qur'an is considered to be the greatest miracle in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Every prophet came with miracles. Once they left this life, their miracles died with them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, his miracle is still with us. And that is the Holy Qur'an. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to keep the Qur'an close to us. And we have to recite the Qur'an. And we have to ponder upon the verses of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Qur'an, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder and think and realize about the Qur'an or are their hearts locked? For many of us, the Qur'an is just a book that's sitting on the shelf. We don't even go to the Qur'an or we have the app of the Qur'an on our phones but we don't, own, we don't go to that app. We don't check up on that app. The screen time on that app is very little. We have to strengthen our ties with the Qur'an. We have to recite the Qur'an and we have to begin to contemplate and wonder and think about the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Qur'an. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we begin the commentary of one of the beautiful chapters in the Qur'an, chapter 31, which is Surat Luqman, chapter of Luqman. 
Now, what makes Luqman unique is that he was a man who used to contemplate. He was a man who used to think. He was a man who used to observe life around him. And that's what made him Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman the wise. Luqman, he was not a prophet of Allah. But he is at the same tier and at the same rank of the prophets. Where the prophets are mentioned in the Quran, the stories of the prophets are mentioned in the Quran. Luqman is also mentioned alongside the prophets. What did Luqman do in order to reach such a high rank? where he is compared with the prophets. Many people ask, is Luqman a prophet? Luqman was not a prophet, according to the hadith of Rasulullah However, Luqman was given something that the prophets had, and that was wisdom. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Luqman with a gift that only the luckiest people receive. One of the greatest gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for someone to receive is wisdom. After faith, after having the gift of iman, the gift of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second greatest gift that anyone should ask for before asking for money, before asking for wealth, before asking for power, before asking for children or anything, ask for wisdom. Ask so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you maximize your intellectual capacity. And that is through the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will give you and instill that wisdom in your heart. Allah says in the Quran, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the knowledge and the wisdom to whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. And then Allah says, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Whoever has been gifted the wisdom, this person has been given the greatest khayr, the greatest gift. So one of the du'as that we should always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for is to increase our intellectual capacity. To, make, to have us make sound judgments, correct judgments. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمَا Ask Allah to increase your knowledge. Some of us, we have the knowledge. There are some people out there, they're, very, they're geniuses, but they don't have wisdom. You have to have the knowledge, you have to seek knowledge. And you have to make wise decisions and wise choices in life. So Luqman was a wise man. And he is eternalized in the Quran because of what he has done. The narrations mention that Luqman lived during the time of Prophet Dawood salam, And he was from the relatives of Prophet Ayyub, Job. So Luqman... He was given the wisdom and the story of how he was given the wisdom is narrated to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Scholars of tafsir, one of them, Al-Allam al-Tabarsi in his tafsir, Majma' al-Bayan, he mentions this hadith. He says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he tells the Muslims, حَقًّا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ لم يكن لقمان نبيا. I will tell you that Luqman was not a prophet. Luqman was not a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, ولكن كان عبدا كثير التفكر. One of the qualities that he had was first of all he was a abd. He was a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a slave of other people. He was a slave of Allah. And this is the greatest honor for anyone to have in life. This is why even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the most complete creation of Allah, we say in our prayers, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Before being a messenger, Rasulullah was a slave and servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Luqman, 
He was a servant, a slave of Allah. وَلَكِنْ كَانَ عَبْدًا كَثِيرَ التَّفَكُّرُ He was a man who would constantly contemplate and think. حَسَنَ الْيَقِينَ He had strong, positive certainty. Some people are thinking, but they're shaky. They're, they don't have certainty in Iman. They don't have certainty in Allah, certainty in times of difficulties when they're being tested. Luqman, he had that strong certainty. Ahabba Allah fa'ahabba. He loved his Lord, so his Lord loved him. And when you love God, God will love you. And when God loves you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you gifts. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Luqman? وَمَنَّ عَلَيْهِ بِالْحِكْمَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the greatest gift and that is wisdom. The power of wisdom, making sound decisions, making positive, good, healthy decisions in life. This is Luqman. Rasulullah in the same hadith, he continues, he says Luqman was sleeping one day and he had a dream. In his dream, he heard a caller telling him, O oh, Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the option to become a leader, to become a powerful leader, a king, someone who has strong authority and strong power. Do you wish to be a leader? Luqman, here's where wisdom, his wisdom kicks in. Luqman, he answers the angels, he tells them, if it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering me and commanding me to be a leader, then I will accept whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands. I will follow the commandments and the orders of Allah because I know if God is ordering me to do something, then God will support me and God will help me withstand the challenges. However, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the option of becoming a leader or not becoming a leader, then I will choose al-afiyah. I will rid myself of the calamity. I don't want to have the bala. Here, the angels, they ask Luqman, they tell him, what do you mean? He says, being in a position of power is not necessarily a good thing. Today, a lot of us, we think that if I have money, if I have wealth, if I have power, then God is blessing me. And the ones who do not have, then that means God is punishing them, God is taking away from them. Luqman, he was a wise man, and he says the exact opposite. He says, I would rather not have a position of power, because with a position of power comes great responsibilities, and with responsibilities comes great risks. And the risk is not only falling in this life, it's failing the Jannah, losing the afterlife. So then he tells the angels, I would rather be Aziz in the afterlife, have honor and glory in the afterlife, and not have it in this life. And I would not want to have glory in this life where I'm going to miss out on it in the afterlife. This was supposedly in a dream, according to the hadith of Rasulullah, a dream that Luqman was having. He wakes up and suddenly he has the wisdom. Anything he says, he speaks wisdom. He talks wisdom, anything that he says, now he becomes a wise man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him one of the greatest gifts. يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Whoever has been given the wisdom, this person has been given a great gift. This is why, my dear brothers and sisters, one of your du'as during this month of Ramadan, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you make sound decisions in life. Ask Allah to support you in your decision making. Ask Allah to be there for you, to guide you and to show you the path of guidance. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, even though he's the most complete and he has the most knowledge, Rasulullah never would be arrogant and make independent decisions. This is 
this the one who makes decisions on their own quick decisions hasty decisions this is not a sign of wisdom rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa his wife says i heard him in his sujood he's crying and in his sujood he's asking allah he's saying ilahi la takilni ila nafsi tarfatu aynan abada oh allah don't leave me independent on my own not even for a blink of an eye Meaning, oh Allah, I am in need of your guidance. Oh Allah, you help me make decisions in life. And this is what Luqman had. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says in a hadith, أَمَا وَاللَّهِ مَا أُوْتِيَ لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ بِحَسَبٍ وَلَا مَالٍ وَلَا أَهْلٍ وَلَا بَسْطٌ فِي الْجِسْمِ وَلَا جَمَالٍ Imam Sadiq says, Luqman was not given the wisdom because of his hasab, because of his family, his lineage. He's from this community, he's from this village, he's from this country. Wala mal, not because of his wealth. Wala ahl, not because of his family. Wala bastun fil jism, not because of his strength, his strong body. Wala jamal, not because of his beauty. We tend to measure people, their success, in these issues, in their wealth, their family, their last name, their beauty, their strength. These are the things that we look at. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks deeper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks in your heart. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decide whether you are deserving of His mercy or not. Whether you are deserving of His blessings or not. So Luqman, he didn't have these things. He didn't have a family. He didn't have... A strong, known family. He wasn't strong. He wasn't very good looking. He didn't have all these things. What did he have that made him be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلَكِنَّهُ كَانَ رَجُلًا قَوِيًّا فِي أَمْرِ اللَّهِ What made Luqman stand out and what the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him wisdom? لأنه كان كَانَ قَوِي رَجُلًا قَوِيًّا فِي أَمْرِ اللَّهِ He was strong in the matters of God. How strong am I when it comes to matters of God? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me to pray, when God tells me to recite the Qur'an, when God tells me to recite dua, when God tells me to fast, some of us, as soon as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders me something, or something with, that has to do with God giving charity, helping out people, we start making up excuses here and there. But if someone tells me, you have to go and play a game, you have to go and stay up all night, you have to watch a boxing match, you have to do this, we're up. We have no problem with that. Our strength is for this dunya, and our weakness is when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be the other way, the other way around. وَلَكِنَّهُ كَانَ رَجُلًا قَوِيًّا فِي أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Mutawarra'an fillah. He has wara'. Wara'a means you're very, very careful that you don't do anything which will be an act of oppression, an act of injustice. Disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amir al Mu'mineen, he asked Rasulullah, what is the greatest deed during the month of Ramadan? He tells him, Al wara'an maharam illah. Be very careful not to fall in the sin. If you have two options, Either you protect yourself from not falling in the sin or you do extra salah, extra charity, extra ibadat. If you can choose one of them, choose not to sin. That is greater than doing all of the a'mal, doing all of the ibadat and then coming and wiping it all out with one sin, with one act of disobedience. So he says, mutawarra'an fillah, sakitan. He was quiet. He wasn't always talking. Some people, they have to always talk. They have to always say something. One of the qualities of a wise person is someone who's quiet. Only talk when you have to. Mustakinan. He has that sense of tranquility, that sense of sukoon. Amiq al-nadar. He's farsighted. He's able to see deep. And tawil al-fikra. He has long thoughts. Hadid al-nadar. Sharp vision. Mustaghnin bil He takes lessons from past experiences. You have to have 
foresight and hindsight. Foresight is you have to make proper decisions for your future. And hindsight is very important. That's you making proper decisions based off of experiences that you've had before. If someone, they made a mistake, a wise person does not make the same mistake twice. Only a foolish person will make the same mistake more than once. So these are the qualities in Luqman, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased the wisdom for Luqman. Now, Surah Luqman, chapter 31 in the Qur'an is considered to be a Meccan verse, a Meccan surah, a Me Meccan chapter. What is Meccan chapter? You find in the beginning of the Qur'an, it will tell you this verse is from Mecca, or in the end of the Qur'an, this verse is a Meccan verse or a Medinan verse. This is because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the Qur'an was being revealed on Rasulullah for 23 years. The first 13 years were when Rasulullah was in Mecca and then Rasulullah migrated to Medina. So some of the verses that the verses that were revealed in Mecca, they are described as Meccan verses and the verses that were revealed in Medina, they are described as verses that were revealed in Medina. Now, each verse, each surah in the Quran, whether it's Meccan or Medinan, you could tell if it's a, a verse that was revealed in Mecca or a verse that was revealed in Medina, not only through the narrations that we have, but also through the context of the surah. The verses that were revealed in Mecca, the surahs that were revealed in Mecca, they're mainly focused on ideology, on the Day of Judgment, on Tawheed, and the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and building the foundation of the faith. Because the people in Mecca, the majority of them, they were idol worshippers. So now, in the early stages, the Qur'an has to first build the foundations and establish the Tawheed of Allah, establish the belief in the Day of Judgment, the belief in the Prophethood of Rasulullah have people accept the Qur'an. And then once Rasulullah migrated to Medina, the rhetoric changed. Now in Medina, Rasulullah doesn't have to deal with mushrikeen, idol worshippers anymore. Now Rasulullah is building a community. Now there are Muslims and there are also Ahlul Kitab, people of the book. Now Rasulullah, now the Quran is teaching people how to establish themselves, how to deal with personal problems that the Muslims had with one another. The verses dealing with hypocrisy rise at that time. The verses of battles are spoken at that time. Now. Surat Luqman, chapter 31, was revealed in Mecca. And you will notice that through the language of the, that is used in the, in, the, in the chapter. And the context, you will understand that this is a verse, that was, a surah that was revealed in Mecca. One of the differences you will notice is that, and this is for you while you're reading the Qur'an, if a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, typically that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking in Mecca to all people. But when Allah says, Ya ayyuhan mu'min, O believers, Ya ayyuhan ladina amanu, O ones who have believed, typically these are the verses that are revealed in Medina because Allah is speaking to people who have already believed. Now, before we conclude, and inshallah, tomorrow we will begin explaining the verses, verse by verse. However, Surah Luqman is not a very long chapter in the Qur'an. And it is highly recommended to recite this chapter for the sake of protection. We have several hadith that say for someone to recite Surah Luqman for protection and to have wisdom, to strengthen your wisdom. In a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he says, مَنْ قَرَأَ سُورَةْ لُقْمَانْ كَانَ لَهُ لُقْمَانْ رَفِيقًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever recites Surah Luqman, frequently recites Surah Luqman, Luqman will be your partner on the Day of Judgment. Meaning that Luqman will be your friend, Luqman will be there to help you and to support you. Do you want to be with ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as wise individuals? Or do you want to be with ones who are not so wise? 
Of course, everyone wants to be with the wise person. And being with Luqman is a great honor. And then Rasulullah continues, he says, the one who re- recites Surah Luqman, وَأُعْطِيَ مِنَ الْحَسَنَاتِ عَشْرًا عَشْرًا بِعَدَدْ مَنْ عَمَلَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَا عَلَى الْمُنْكَرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the person who recites Surah Luqman the blessings tenfold, tenfold, like the ones who do Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an al munkar, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Why? Because Luqman, as we will read, we will, of course, this verse is, this chapter is named Surah Luqman because it's going to mention some of the, some of the words of wisdom of Luqman. The whole chapter doesn't have to do with Luqman, but the name is Luqman because several times in the chapter, the name of Luqman is mentioned. And when he's mentioned, Luqman is giving advice to his son. He tells his son, Ya Bunayya, la tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Oh my son, do not associate a partner with Allah because associating a partner with Allah is the greatest act of injustice. And he keeps giving his son pieces of wisdom. So if you want to have wisdom, and if you want to have the reward of someone who's enjoining the good and forbidding the evil the same way Luqman was, then you recite Surah Luqman. In another hadith from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, the fifth Imam of Ahl al-Bayt, he says, مَنْ قَرَأَ سُورَةْ لُقْمَانْ فِي لَيْلَةٍ وَكَّلَ اللَّهِ بِهِ فِي لَيْلَتِهِ ثَلَاثِينَ مَلِكًا يَحْفُظُونَهُ مِنْ إِبْلِيسِ وَجُنُودَهِ حَتَّى يُصْبِحْ The one who recites Surah Luqman at night, before you sleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send 30, 30 angels that will protect you from Iblis until the moment you wake up. So these angels, they will be there to protect you from shaitan and from the army of shaitan until you wake up. And then he says, فَإِنْ قَرَأَهَا بِالنَّهَارِ حَفِظَهُ مِنْ إِبْلِيسِ وَجُنُودَهُ حَتَّى يُمْسِي And the one who recites it in the morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you and keep those angels there to protect you from Iblis and his army until that night. So it's a verse of protection. It's a verse, it's a surah of protection, and it's a surah that will increase your wisdom and it will make you be with Luqman. My dear brothers and sisters, I will conclude here. Inshallah, tomorrow we will begin looking at the beginning several verses of this chapter. Alif, Lam, Mim. We will explain what are these letters in the Quran. What do these letters mean? These, these huruf al muqatta'a these unconnected letters. What do they mean? What do they symbolize? And then, tilka ayatul kitab al hakim, talking about the Quran and the signs of the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to protect you and to bless you all by the blessings of the holy month of Ramadan. This holy month, even though we are in our homes, we have to take advantage of this month and we should not miss out on any opportunity we have of increasing our wisdom, increasing our knowledge and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will conclude by the recitation of one of the blessed du'as that is recommended, a short du'a that is recommended to be recited during these nights, the days and nights of the month of Ramadan. And this is supposed to be recited after each prayer. Ya Aliyu, Ya Azim, Ya Ghafuru, Ya Rahim. Anta Rabbu Al Azim, Al Ladi Laysa Kamithlihi Shay. Wahwa Sami Al Basir. Wahada Shahron Abdam Tahu Akaram Tah. وشرفته وفضلته على الشهور وهو الشهر الذي فرضت صيامه عليه وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن 
هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شهر فيا ذا المني ولا يمن عليك من علي بفكاك رقبتي من النار في من تمن عليه وادخل للجنة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتح مع الصلوات اللهم صل على